those of you who don't know, I'm Deacon Ray Ortman, but I'm actually dressed as a server tonight. And over here is Mr. Joey Nelson. He is also dressed as a server tonight. And we are going to introduce you to the mass parts a bit about the role of server because you are old enough now to be servers. And some of you may wish to do that. Others of you may, may not know for sure yet, but maybe when you see it, or maybe when you see your friends or brothers and sisters do it, maybe you'll like to do it too. And so, but whether you become an altar server or not, it's still helpful to understand why do we have altar servers and what role do they play in the Mass. There are many roles that are played in the Mass. And in each of those roles, there's a unique, important feature. Obviously, essential to the Mass is the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? God. If God's not here, then we got nothing. But also important is, of course, the priest who prays the words of the proper prayers and leads all of the people in worship. Okay, then there's also the role of deacon, which I usually fill, which is to assist at the altar, assist the priest at the altar, and also to proclaim the word of God, specifically the gospel, and to lead a few of the other responses. Behind the scenes, there's a sacristan who sets out the bread and wine, the water, the books, the, the, the things that we need for Mass. There's also the role of lector. A lector is one who proclaims the word of God from the ambo, from the first reading and the second reading, and often will also lead the congregation in prayer. There's the music ministry, including the cantor who proclaims the psalm. There's the greeter ushers who welcome people in the name of the whole church. There's the congregation for whom all of this exists. And in each of these assemblies of people, whether it's an individual or multiple people, we're all here to express our joy and our gratitude to God and to receive him and hopefully to grow in faith and hope and love. Tonight, talking about the altar servers. It's a really important ministry because nobody can do it all. Even, you know, even Father Bob, whatever priest, cannot do it all and needs help with preparing the altar, needs help receiving the gifts, needs help to, to involve all of the people. The server is a bit, a bit of a bridge between the congregation and those who wear the vestments. And so the servers will wear the vestments. <clears throat> you're representing your whole family. You're representing all the people in the congregation who when you are attentive to your ministry as altar server. So what I'd like to do is like to sort of walk through the Mass with you, specifically highlighting the role of altar server. You may have questions as we go. By all means, raise your hand. I love, I love questions. Mr. Nelson may also have questions and he may chime right in and he doesn't have to raise his hand, <laughs> okay. It, catechists, if you have questions, just shout them out too. And if you see one of these young people has a question, please make sure that I'm aware of it because I want to be able to address your questions. You may also see Liz Fahm, who is here tonight. She is our communications director. She's actually recording this on a video so that if you would like to see it again and again, perhaps maybe you might be interested in being a server, but maybe not for a couple months and you might worry that you forgot well, then we'll have the video and then you can see that too, okay? So before we begin, because we begin all of our prayers, and I consider this to be a, a form of prayer tonight, we begin all our prayers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And we pray, loving God, we ask your blessings upon us who are here this evening. Fill our hearts with love for you. Fill our hearts for love for the beauty of the liturgy, the beauty of the Mass. Help us to be full participants as congregants, as altar servers, as lectors, as your holy people. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, so what's the first thing that happens at Mass? I think I just gave a hint. Right? The name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Father Bob usually likes to do it down there by the end of the baptismal font. And 
Before he does that, everybody who's in the liturgical ministry role takes their positions. So, Joey, I'm going to ask you to go light those two altar candles and go bring them down to the other end. So everyone's going to take their position. So if you are an altar server, the first thing you do with your parents is you go to the special room just before you come into the church here. It's called the sacristy. Sacred sacristy. It's the place where all of the vestments and the sacred vessels are held. And you put on, a, you put on an alb. You know, anyone know what alb means? You do? Yes, it is, the, it is the liturgical garment that goes beneath either the chasuble that the priest wears or the dematic that the deacon wears. But alb means white. You may remember it from like a word like albino, right? Alb means white. And it's a white, and what it is, is it it's represents the baptismal garment. Who here has been baptized? So that when you are at church, you can wear an alb because it is your baptismal garment. Those who are in the liturgical roles will often wear the baptismal garment to remind everybody that it's their garment too. And then there's also the, this, the cord or the rope or the, its fancy name is the cincture. Kind of helps to keep the alb in place and keep it nice and tidy. And then the, the pectoral cross that goes over the chest. Again, because that's the mark of a Christian. So we're dressed as Christians. That's what this means. And that's, what, and that's how we like for... Uh, the, the priest, the deacon, and the altar servers specifically will dress in this garb or this garment. And then at the beginning of Mass, just before Mass, do you see where Mr. Nelson is? He's got, he's got two candles down there. I'm going to join him in a minute. And then that's where the altar server waits because we're all at the very beginning of Mass. It's a very important time to enter into a sacred, prayerful time. We all come in together and then we all leave together. And why do we do that? It's because we're not just coming for ourselves, we're coming to God. And so we are respectfully uh, processing, if you will, kind of like they did on Palm Sunday when there was this procession of the people with Jesus along the way into Jerusalem. It's kind of like that. They were waving palms. And on Palm Sunday, we do wave palms. But still, it's the same idea. It's important for us to signify respect and also expecting we are going somewhere really important. And so we make it a little bit more formal than we would. So we'll walk in together. Those of you who have perhaps noticed will understand that there's often a third server who would carry the processional cross in front of all of the rest of the procession because we all go everywhere we, where we are in, in worship following Jesus, which is the cross. But the, the candle, the candle also represents Jesus as well because Jesus, the Bible tells us, Jesus is the light of the world. Everybody, when they were baptized in the Catholic Church, not only received a white garment, but also received a lit candle representing the light of Christ. And so Christ the crucifix goes before us, but then also Christ the light as well. And when we can have two servers, even better for us, because Jesus was both God and man, and each shone with light. And so when we be well, Father will announce in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the hymn will start to play. As soon as people start to sing, that's when the, that's when the procession begins. And it's led by the cross bearer, and then it's the candle bearers, which a good idea is to kind of hold it where you kind of have to just look up a little bit at the flame and keep it out from your body about a foot. You don't want it to be tipping. You don't want to catch your hair on fire but just a sort of a comfortable arm's length, about that much out. Your arms might be a little shorter than mine, so don't go for a, go for a foot, 
might feel too long, just where the, your arms would naturally rest. And then we would just walk in together. You've seen, you've seen it done a hundred times before, but it's a little different when you do it for the first time as part of the procession, but nothing to worry about. And so you, we wait here as servers, kind of at these corner points here, and then Father will come in the middle, and when he bows, we're carrying something, and so we don't want to bow. We just nod our heads, and then Father will go up to the altar, and then we as servers will go put the candles in their stands. And then we go and take, we get ready to take our places. Over here is where the, all of the vested servers at the altar will sit. Father Bob sits here. If I'm here as deacon, I would sit here, and then the servers would sit on either side. But of course, we're not ready to sit because there's still the introductory rites, and so we're not going to sit until everybody sits. Um, but after, after the opening rites, there's the Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. There's the Gloria. After the Gloria, there's another role for the server. Beforehand, the two servers will decide who gets to do what role. But when Father says, let us pray, then whoever is on gets Father's book. And if you're not sure who's on, just move. And whoever moves first is it, all right? And brings it over to Father Bob. Now, Father Bob likes to hold the book, so you hand it to him, and you just stand back a bit, and he'll pray from it. If it's a visiting priest, it'll probably be a red book, and he might like you to hold it for him. Now, this is an important role, because if, if they're always hopping up and down to get things, it's distracting to the people. But if you're just quietly right there with it when they need it, Everything goes so nicely and smoothly. So that's, that's the first thing that sort of one of the servers will do by themselves is they'll bring the book when Father says, let us pray at the beginning. Father Bob always hands it back, and then you take it back and you put it on Father's chair. You can either put it where he's going to sit on it or you can put it to the side, which is a little nicer. And uh, then to try to keep a symmetry... The servers kind of keep an eye on each other. When everyone else is sitting, they'll sit together. Okay? That much simple. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more and get up a little bit closer. At this point in time, we have the readings. How many readings are there at a weekend mass? Does anybody know? I see two. I see three. I see two. Yes, I see, what did I see on your hand? Four? Yeah, we don't talk about there being four, but actually there are four. We have, the we have the first reading that's almost always from the Old Testament. Today it happened to be, does anybody remember? I don't blame you if you don't. It happened to be, f oh, you do? That was the gospel, very good. The first reading today was from the book of the prophet Daniel. All right, then the second reading is actually sung. That's the psalm. The psalm. Wow, that's one of the books of the... Well, there's 50, 150 chapters in that book of the Bible. So we always have a psalm. Then this, the second reading, but it's really the third. Does anyone remember what book that was from this, this morning or last night? It's the very last book in the Bible. Does that help? It's the book about the things that haven't happened yet? Revelation. Okay, good. Yes. So that was our second reading. So we've got our first reading, our psalm, our second reading, although you can think of it as the third reading. Then there's, a, then there's, a, then there's that fourth reading. What do we call that reading? 
Not, not quite to that yet. There's one more. You said it before about the inter- the t- Jesus talking to Pilate. What, what reading do we call that? What's the reading where Jesus has got everything to say? Yeah. The gospel, yes. Gospel means good news. And they got, there's four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they tell us all the things that Jesus said and did while he lived on earth with us. So because they are all about Jesus, they are very important. And reading the gospel is like bringing Jesus right into church. Because it's so important, in the Catholic Church, we, we ritualize it with a little bit more fanfare, a little bit, bring more attention to it than the sort of the simplicity of the first reading and the second reading are simply proclaimed from the ambo with not much fanfare. There's still the introduction, a reading from this book or that book, and then they say the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. But with the gospel, we go the extra mile, if you will. And so what's the first thing we do when it's time for the gospel? Does anyone remember? <clears throat> Even before that, the first thing we do is we stand up, right? Remember that? Father will stand, the music will start to play, everybody will stand. Why are we standing for the gospel when we're not standing for the first two readings? Because what? Yeah, because it's respective of Jesus. Today we remember today was the feast of Christ the King. If a king comes in, do you just sit in your chair? No. If a king comes in, or a president, or, or a very important person, you stand up, it's a sign of respect, it's a sign that you want to greet them, right? I mean, if somebody comes to your house that you're looking forward to having them come, like grandma or grandpa or something, don't, you probably run to the door, don't you? Yeah, well, that's what that is. That's standing up and you're, you're ready for Jesus and here he comes. So, and, and we also sing Alleluia, like, to, to make it more like Palm Sunday, to more joyful, more festive, more... Jesus is the king. He's worthy of our glory and our honor, okay? Um, the servers have a special role in this as well, and this is the, sort of the next server piece of the liturgy. We accompany Jesus to the ambo as servers, and so as soon as that alleluia starts to, the music starts, as soon as, as, soon as Father Bob stands up, the servers have a role. So when Father Bob stands up, then the servers will, and this server may have to take a little bit of an arc if I'm here to receive the blessing. That's how important it is that there's a special blessing to be received before proclaiming the gospel. But then the two servers will go this way, and they will come and retrieve those candles. Those candles, as you will remember, represent Jesus, the light of the world. And so it's only natural that they would be present when Jesus is proclaimed in the gospel. So together, then the servers would take their candles. And usually then Father Bob or I are gathering the book of the gospels off the altar at this point in time, and you will lead us. And so we will take our candles. And then we will take up sort of places of honor and respect while the gospel is proclaimed. And so we stand here, and then Jesus is proclaimed in the word, and he's also honored by the presence of the light of Christ, which, of course, he is and also is in our hearts. And it reminds us that this is really a holy moment, a holy time for us to try to see and hear and feel and just encounter Jesus, what he's saying to us through the words of Scripture and also the fact that he's really present with us through the Spirit. The gospel is proclaimed. When the gospel is concluded, we all say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, right? because that's who was just being spoken, that's who was being testified to. When, we, when 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, happens. Then the two servers take their candles back. I'll let you take them both, Joey. Right. And put them back in their stands again. And now it's time for that homily that I, I believe somebody said was next. And so when the candles are back, the servers will return to their chairs and then they will sit down at the same time. If we try to do everything so that we are the mirror image, so that we are doing it together, it makes it look like we're one, but there's two of us. Just like Jesus is both human and divine, but only one person, the servers try to act in unison. It just looks cleaner and it looks like it's not two people, but one person. Um, representing all of the congregation. So that so far takes us through the homily. I'm going to stop there for a moment. Are there any questions anybody has about the Mass or about the role of server in the, basically up until this point in time or the importance of what we do in Mass? So far we've taken ourselves through the sort of the two... Um, the first two parts of the Mass. The first part of the Mass is where we gather together. And that happens the moment you get out of the car in the parking lot. And you come and sit down, that's what happens. And you say hello and you welcome people. And then we have our introductory rites. And we sing our song and we pray together. Then we're ready. The second part is, the pro is proclaiming. That's when these four readings are spoken, right? And that's the good news. Jesus, love, God's providence, his, his plan for us is in sacred scriptures that was written for our benefit many, many years ago is still alive and active in our, in our world and in our hearts. And so we take that all in. But now we have to sort of, now it's, even though it may have been an act of listening, now we start to break it open. Now, so this is the next major section of the masses after proclaiming is comes breaking. And that's what the homily does. It breaks it open. Father or I will, will offer what's called a homily and we'll try to point out a few things that might be helpful to people. Meanwhile, you're probably also thinking about some things that you thought were interesting about the gospel. Like I know you thought you were thinking about it clearly because you remembered it. You remembered, oh yeah, this is when Jesus and Pilate were talking. And they were having a pretty interesting conversation. They were arguing or discussing what does truth mean? I mean, that's about as interesting as it gets. Um, and Jesus had one view of truth and Pilate wasn't so sure he was all that interested in the truth. He just wanted to get through a busy day. Um, and so they didn't get a very long conversation, but it's still an interesting one. And so that's what, in the homily, trying to figure out what's going on, okay? What is, what is God trying to tell me from what I just heard in the scriptures? So after, after the homily, then where do we go next? Does anyone not know what comes after the homily, ordinarily? The creed. We've just heard the word of God. We've actually heard it explained too. And so now we're saying, yeah, we, I believe. I believe is what we say. And so I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, his son. And we have a lot of things to say about what we believe about Jesus. We also believe in the Holy Spirit. And we also believe in the church. And that's, that's what we do. We, we say that standing again because in essence we're declaring God is in our midst and we believe, so we stand. And when you're standing as a server, you're just going to stand right in front of the chair that you were sitting in. And then after the creed comes the prayers of the faithful. And so the lector or the deacon will say the prayers of the faithful. And everybody will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. You have a question. No? Okay. Okay. After that, the server's role is, uh, is active again, okay? You're always active because you're there, you're listening, you're respectful. You are being attentive to model to everybody else how attentive they should be to our Lord being proclaimed. But after the prayers of the faithful, then we have to do the preparation of the altar, this is where the focus of our liturgy turns from the word of God proclaimed to the sacrifice of Christ offered at the altar 
and also the sacrifices of our lives that we join with Christ's life in the Eucharist. But you see, the altar right now is empty. We can't have the Mass with an empty altar. Surfers have an important role to make sure that everything is ready to go. And it's also important because you represent all of the congregation in making that happen. Because all of us have something, all of us have a gift for the altar. It may be the bread and wine, but it may also be a sincere desire to understand Christ or a sincere desire to forgive somebody or a sincere desire to just try to do what, you know, to try to live a good life and, and, and grow in faith and love. These are gifts that all of us should be bringing to the altar every time that we come to Mass. We visually represent those in a unique way with the gifts of bread and wine that Jesus say that his followers ought to offer as their sacrifice. This is why Jesus said at the Last Supper, right? When we hear the words of institution from the Last Supper, from the priest at every Mass, but they're not there yet. So we need to get them there. Now, if it's COVID times, we usually have them set over there, and then they're brought up from there. But I'm going to show you what we usually do pre-COVID times, because it may not seem like it, but we will eventually get back to those. And so after the prayers of the faithful have been said, we pray through Christ our Lord, then Father Bob usually mentions a few extra things like now we'll gather our gifts and maybe he'll invite the, the, the children to bring forward the food gifts. Who's brought forward food gifts before? Exactly, you've already been in essence a bit of a server in that respect because you have brought the gifts to the altar. So just by bringing your food gift, you have already been a server in that way because you've brought the gift to the altar. But as a vested server, we've got to bring a few more things. So the, when that happens, one of the servers, whoever it is, and you decide this in advance or else whoever starts does it, has to prepare the altar. First thing is, since you're already over here, you take Father's book because he's got prayers he's going to need to pray out of it. And you take that and you're going to put that up on the altar. And you want to move slowly and respectfully. Only takes one server to do this so the other one can stay in their seat for a moment. And you're just going to bow slightly to the altar and put Father's book down on it. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is that we're going to need to have the chalice for the wine and also this piece of cloth, this rectangular piece of cloth with a little red cross on it, which is used to purify the chalice. Does anybody know what this is called? I've kind of already given a clue. Used to purify the chalice, it's called a It's called a purificator. It's just a funny word, but it's a church word, so I thought I'd mention it. <laughs> you set the chalice right about there, um, and then the purificator just off to the side like that. That prepares the altar up till then. Meanwhile, again, in times before and after COVID, there will probably be a hymn being played and a collection will be being taken up and the collection actually is brought to the altar because that represents the gifts of all of the people in the congregation for God that they are sacrificing at the altar. So everybody's bringing a gift. It might be the offering. It might be a food gift. It might be the gifts of bread and wine. But when that collection is done to be taken up, then there will be people... At, that the 
when the collection is done, they'll usually gather by that big candle down there, the Christ candle. And then at, they will have assigned a family to go and bring up the gifts. Do we have two people that want to be the family? Okay. I got one here and one here. So if you will, jo you to... Joey will go and help you, but if you'll go over to that, that table on the wall there, that black table that's got things on it, that's called the credence, uh, that's called the table of the gifts. Perfect, and you take that. And so one will ring for in the family, they can split it up however they like. Good with this, good? All right. right, and then the family will also usually bring up the collection. And so they're going to bring, meanwhile, Father Bob, and if I'm here, me, and also the other server are going to be at the altar, like where I am now. Guys come right across here. So they're going to bring it, the gifts, and try to hand them either to Father Bob or to me, and then I'll just pretend I'm kind of me as server and me as deacon. I'll take them, and then... He may also suggest that you give them to somebody, and so you'll receive that. Okay, and that's the family would do that, and then, of course, the family will bow to the altar, and then we'll bow a little bit back, all right? It's like they're saying, here you are, our Lord, and here we are saying thank you for your gifts, when we just do that without saying anything, but we just do a little bow, and then thank you very much, and the family will go back to their seats, and then this... Father Bob and the servers will finish bringing up the gifts on the altar, the bread and the water and the wine. Now, I've left everything empty so we don't have any spills tonight, but those empty cruets uh, that are in Mr. Nelson's hands represent the water and the wine. And so that was, if, if Father Bob is here alone, then you wait for him to take them t from you. If you can present them to him, handle first. It's a little bit easier for him. If he is not here, but uh, rather, if I am here, you can present them to me instead. So then the server will present them like this to either the priest or the deacon, and they will take it. They'll finish preparing the chalice. And then meanwhile, the other server, who's not the one that just handed off the, the gifts of water and wine, will have headed over to this table against the pillar here. That one's called the credence table to bring the bowl and there's a little towel in it. Now what are we going to do with that? Does anybody know? That's right. Does anyone know why we pour water on Father's hands at this point in time? It's the same as kind of like wearing a white garment. It's white because it's not dirty. It's white because it represents through baptism that our sins have been washed away. And that all that's left is white and purity and glory. And it's the same thing. We, the server will, now one server will always hold the bowl and the water at the same time. The other server can hold the towel but we never split the water from the bowl because otherwise it's easy to spill. And so Father puts his hands out and he says, and I don't know if, if you've ever heard what Father says when, he's, when he rinses his hands in the water. Does anyone, sometimes he says it loud enough to hear it, sometimes he doesn't. He says, Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. It's a way of, suggest, of, of demonstrating and in action, the fact of literally the fact that Christ washes away our sins. Because even though the priest, like all of us, is a sinner, he's offering this most sacred sacrifice in God's name to God. And so ritually, he's, he's essentially saying, I know I'm not worthy to do this, but you will make me worthy to do this. And you may not ever feel that you're worthy for any particular thing too, but you are because Christ makes you worthy. And so after that, Father will usually place the, the towel after he's dried his hands on somebody, either hand it back to the one server or drape it over the arm. And then the server goes and puts those back on the credence table so that 
And this would also go back on the credence table at some point in time. So that all that's left now is the water, the wine, the book, and the purification. Now Father's ready to offer the sacrifice in the name of the whole community. And after all of the things are placed on the credence table, then the servers will get ready with the rest of the congregation to celebrate the Mass. And so the Father will motion for people to stand, and they'll stand and say, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, and et cetera. And we'll go all the way through the Holy, 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 which is the song of all of the angels and saints in the book of Revelation in heaven. And then when everybody else kneels, then we've got special kneelers here for you as servers, so you're not going to kill your, your knees on hard floor or hard wood. And so you just, you just sort of kneel here facing the altar. Nice to have your hands in a prayerful position. And you're just with everybody else in the congregation. Sometimes if it's Father Bob, if you're a server, he may have asked you in advance if you would be okay with holding Arlo. Who likes, to, who likes Arlo? <laughs> so, you know, if you serve, you might get to hold Arlo's leash during uh, the prayers at the altar. So, uh, and if you wouldn't mind doing that, let Father Bob know if you're a server. He, you're the first person he'd love to hold Arlo for him. Um, and so there we are, and you're, you're close up. You can see. You can see everything that's happening really closely. You're, you're the eyes for the person in the far back pew that maybe can't see so well and it's really far. But you're being attentive because they want to be that attentive. And so at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, um, we all pray together the Our Father. At that point in time, the servers along with everybody else kind of gather in a semicircle about the back of the altar. And then we pray the Our Father. We have the sign of peace. You just stay here. You wait. You will be among the first to receive communion all, all, along with the other extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion you'll receive. And then at that point in time when the Eucharistic ministers take the sacrament to the people in the pews by standing in front of the sections, then you'll take your candles again. You'll just turn right around. You're, they're right here. They're handy. And again, because Jesus is really present in those gifts of bread and wine that have become the body and blood of Christ, he is accompanied in the form of the testimony of the light. And so one server takes up a position on one side of the middle and the other takes up a position on the other side. And you basically are there keeping vigil while Christ is present in the Eucharist. And as the people come and receive, they receive the body of Christ, they see the light of Christ, and they may receive the blood of Christ if, if and when COVID ever is beyond, uh, behind us in the rearview mirror. And then at the conclusion of everybody receiving communion, then the servers simply take the candles and put them back in the stands. And then after they put them back in the stands, they sit down in the chair together. And then we have the prayers and the final hymn. Yes, question. Good question. Really, really good question. I'm really glad you asked. If I'm not here as deacon, then you would sit one on either side of Father Bob. But if I'm here as deacon, right where Joey was just a moment ago, that would be where I would sit. And so you would want to sit on either side. And so I was kind of mentally leaving that chair open because I'm sort of here, but I'm not here. So that's the only reason why. But we don't want you to spread out. We want you to be tight. So Father's always in the middle, and the, and, and the first server, whatever, will always be right where Mr. Nelson is. It's the question is, is the second server going to be right next to Father or one down? And if we have three servers, because we can take three servers, because one can carry the cross, then that third one would take this chair here, and then all those chairs would be full. The last thing that the server does 
in the Mass is at the end with the final hymn, you go and get that candle again because we, we, you carried it on the way in, you carry it on the way out. And so you, you get the candle and you stand on either side of the altar with Father Bob in the middle and if I'm here, me in the middle. And this part is tricky. You may or may not know the words of the hymn. If you know the words of the hymn, sing it. If you're standing next to me and I have a hymnal in my hand, I always share. But if you're, even if you don't know the words, kind of hum along in your heart because this is another way that we praise God. And at the conclusion, sure. At the, at the very end, then after the hymn is sung, then Father's going to give the final blessing. And then the dismissal will go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Then the, everybody turns to face the altar. Servers just do a little head bow, Father, and I will do a little bit more of a bow. And then it's time to leave. And Father Bob happens to like to leave really, really, really fast. <laughs> so it's as soon as you turn back around, it's like, try to stay in front of him if you can without tripping. Okay? <laughs> That's all I can say. He'll pass you by if you're not going fast enough, but you can only go as fast as you can safely go. And then up here and out you go and you blow out the candle, you go back in the sacristy and you change back, you take off the, the vestments and uh, then you finally you put the, the unlit candles back in the stands. And that's it. Did that look hard or did that look pretty easy? Yeah, it's pretty easy, yeah, it's pretty easy. You see it once, you have it heard explained once, you can do it. You are all, if you want to, eligible to be server now. I would recommend that the first time, well, Mr. Nelson is here in a dual capacity. Not only is he here tonight, as my helper to sort of demonstrate the, the ministry of server, but he's also going to be the liturgical ministry coordinator now for St. Victoria, and he's going to be the, one of the people that helps to schedule all of the liturgical ministries, including servers. We would love to have servers. We haven't had nearly as many as we would like during COVID. Today, we were blessed to have two at the 845 Mass, and that was just terrific. I love it when the server's there. It's not the same when they're not. So the more that we have the servers there, the better. But we can get you scheduled. Your parents can get you on the list. We can make sure that the first time that you really serve, that either Mr. Nelson will be here, or I will be here, or an experienced server will be here with you for the first time, just so that you know that we're so glad to have you and that you don't have anything to worry about. You just have to, you just have to do it. And, and everybody loves the servers. I can tell you that they do. Hey, thanks everyone for, for being here, for looking into the altar server ministry and uh, what that's in, about and what's involved in that. And it's one of those things that once you start, it comes naturally, and then you get good at it by practicing it, and that's what the training is about. But I have to say, just personally, for me, the altar server is a very um, key um, minister or ministry as I celebrate Mass and preside at Mass for the community. And I'll tell you why. One, practically, there's I count on a mass server a lot. What a, what a caddy is to a golfer, a mass server is to a priest because they go, we work together very closely. A lot of times, practically, I'll just say, I'll like, can you hold Arlo? Right, Arlo? Or, um, I can't see over there. To, is there, is the big chalice on the, credence table yeah you know you can be my eyes my hands my feet or like I did last Sunday I just spilled my water can you go get another refill this glass thank you 
you know, just sort of things that come up within the Mass. But more than that, just knowing that you as a Mass server are on my right side, my left side, helping me, you know, there's kind of a special bond that happens. I have a special connection with the servers because I'm, during the Mass, I am literally physically closest to the servers that are right there. You, you can play that key role. And you know what? You do it, and all of a sudden the Mass comes alive too because it's um, what you're praying, but in a special way by assisting me at the altar. So thanks for looking into it. I, I look forward to seeing you sign up as a Mass server, and then we'll be ready to go. Walk down, down that, um, like a baptismal font, start out and walk in together. People singing will be a good feeling. Thanks everyone for checking this great ministry out.